Hello, this is group one's Being a Manager presentation for Principles of Management with Dr. Steve Diasso. I am going to be the narrator. My name is Benjamin Pitts. To summarize our presentation, the main objective of our show is to show how the manager in our show reacts to different situations in the workplace. Demonstrate some of the different key concepts that we have learned of so far in class. Educate our viewers with lessons on how to handle the work environment problems and how to effectively communicate with a manager to settle the issues. To settle in, maybe grab a drink and perhaps something to eat and enjoy. For our scenario, our video episodes will take place in the Bill Curry Ford Motor Sales Company. The owner, Bill, will not be in the picture. We will be dealing with our sales department manager, Bob. Bob has been hearing complaints from one of the more recently hired workers about a seasoned veteran of car sales, Michael. We will be presenting the different problems at the dealership that Michael is causing. Stick with us in the next couple of minutes to find out what situations Michael gets himself into and how our sales manager, Bob, handles it. So for the first of our character profiles, this is Bob, the sales manager at Bill Curry Ford. His attributes is that he's hardworking, reliable, focused, organized, goal-oriented, a great communicator, fair in judgment, and relaxed. Bob is the sales manager at Bill Curry Ford, like I said before. He is 56 years old. He has been with the company for 20 years. That's a long time in business these days and has been around the company and its environment long enough to give his subordinates guidance and direction in a way he feels is right. He comes up with innovative ways to engage the sales team in competition in order to drive up sales. So for our second character profile, we have Michael. Michael is the main antagonist of the story. Michael is a salesman at Bill Curry Ford. He is 35 years old, and has been with the company seven years. He can be unethical in his sales methods, leading people to believe they can afford things they shouldn't be buying, upselling people on things they don't need, and manipulating finance department members into financing people who are likely to default just to get the sale. He continually tops the sales charts at Bill Curry Ford in no small part due to his business methods. His attributes are that he can be uncharismatic, self-centered, imposing, he likes to create conflict. He's a veteran of sales. So Michael is basically the complete opposite to our protagonist, James. So for our last character slide, we have some uh, supporting characters that only appear like once, etc. So we have Emma. We have James's wife. So she's on his side, wants to support him, tries to convince him to... Um, grow up and fight back against Michael's oppression. Then we have Steven, who is, uh, he starts off pretty nice to Michael, but in order, you know, he likes money like everyone else. And over time, Michael, to get sales, convinces Steven to do some questionable finance deals. And over time, he starts getting Steven to stop associating with James because of the amount of clout that Michael has in getting sales at the dealership. So for our target market and market format, our target market will be anyone between the ages of 18 to 65 at a car dealership. Since there are so many types of personalities who work at this car dealership, we want to pay close attention to whether Michael's behavior is ethical or not and how Bob handles Michael's behavior. So for our next few slides, we're going to be covering the summaries of episodes 1 through 4. So for every episode, we have a little picture to go along with it. And this is James, and in this picture, the main idea is that he's considering what brand of car he would like. So our first episode is called Decisions, Decisions. And the topics it covers are management and managerial functions. So in this episode, we introduce all the characters in their work environment. We have each character's role, a brief description of who they are as a person. This episode will introduce James and his interest in buying a new car. Thing is, the car isn't a Ford. 
So Michael and Stephen, seeing an opportunity to make another sale, voices their opposition to James's decision. Now, James has a decision to make. Does he go against James, Michael and Stephen? Or does he purchase a car that is not a Ford and not from the Ford dealership and cost Michael and Stephen a sale? So for this image, we have Michael trying to sell a car. He's the very stereotypical businessman type with the evil mustache trying to convince James into his clutches. So for episode two, the title is, Will Michael Get Another Sale? Managing strategically and managerial challenges is the main topics managerially of this episode. They say buying a car is one of the biggest financial decisions you can make. However, the extent of this decision for most people is what make, model, and color to buy and compromise with their partners on features. For James, he has these same decisions on top of conflicting interests in the workplace. Michael has been using his clout at the dealership to try and force James's hand and make him buy a Ford. Emma sees that something is bothering James, despite him insisting otherwise, and confronts him to make him talk. Will Emma be able to influence James away from Michael's clutches, or will Michael get yet another sale? So episode 3, Michael is needs help making a decision. One, uh, There's another person in his life who can help him make a decision, who he should be talking to, and that's his wife, Emma. So for episode three, our topics are going to cover planning, organizing, and directing. Emma has heard James's story and is considering it from a mostly unbiased point of view. Now James is, you know, James and Emma are husband and wife, so obviously it's somewhat biased for Emma to side with James, but she doesn't work with Michael, so she sees it from a different point of view. She doesn't know how evil Michael is. So she wants what makes James happy, but doesn't want him to lose his job. She voices that she would also prefer the German car, but emphasizes that this is James' decision and that she will support him no matter what, because they are a team. Emma also tells James that he should stand up for himself and not let people walk all over him. James now has to reconsider his options from this frame of mind. At this point, James has all the information he needs to make a decision. He has Emma's opinion, he has Michael's opinion, and now he has to make a decision, which is an important part of planning. His wife wants him to get the Mercedes, Michael wants him to get the Ford, but Emma, now that he's, she's told him to stand up for himself, that's got a lot of testosterone flowing. He's ready to come, uh, go into conflict with Michael and resolve it. So with episode four we have uh Michael weighing on James's mind, you know, a lot of money going around James's head, he's got a decision to make. So episode four, one last try is responsibility and managerial ethics. James has one more person he can talk to in order to prevent a confrontation. Bob, sales manager. James feels that maybe he can talk to Bob and try to curb Michael's behavior. This is ultimately unhelpful as Bob sees Michael as an excellent salesman and would rather the two of them sort it out. Bob gives a lot of agency to his sales team members and only steps in if it is an emergency. With the conversation with Bob ultimately being fruitless, James must now resolve the conflict alone. This means he has to confront Michael with his decision, which is likely going to be to buy the Mercedes, and try to keep things from being toxic in the workplace. So, future episode ideas. We can use the managerial topic of planning. James must now plan ahead and decide which approach to take in confronting Michael with his decision. We also have chapter 10's topic, groups and teams conflict. Now James has to face his decision in the way that he chose, utilizing his action plan and following it through. I'd also like to 
had an idea of maybe how after his decision and how that affects his cohesion with Michael in the workplace and how they could, you know, get over it going forward. Because Michael is obviously going to be angry for a long time afterward and hold a grudge. And this is our progress as a group so far. So week one, we've made a group chat and a Google Drive. We completed milestone one. For week two, we did milestone two. And now everyone, we had some initial disorganization. Not everyone was in the group. People were confused. Now everyone's together in the group chat. So we're all on the same page. And now we're at the midterm and we're all working together to get this presentation done. And then we have, for the future, we have milestones three, four, you know, the final and everything, the final presentation and beyond.